our economy and their lives. Hello, lives. YouTube. Um, right it's uh, Wednesday, September 7th, 2021, almost 4 o'clock. Well, listen to this. Listen to this dramatic music on this ad. Small businesses and independent contractors who depend on flexibility in the political ad. I kind of agree with the ad, but Arizona's economic recovery and take away our I just, in attracting It's just so cheesy to me how they're using this minor key music to try to mentally manipulate people. Oh, and then when they go to hey, contact this, they change change the music to this positive sounding stuff. Paid for by the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Lame, 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 lame. Huh. Anyway, that is not what I was going to talk to talk about. I just uh, couldn't help but turn on the radio and notice that. Personally, I think ads of that nature should have no music on them whatsoever. But, I don't know, I guess I'm kind of old school when it comes to that sort of broadcasting. Anyway, did I say what time it is? Not sure if I did. It's just about 4 o'clock. Wow, somebody walking. There's a novel concept. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on my way to the Union Jack. Um, in my last video, which I still haven't gotten uploaded yet because I'm kind of behind. This is Arizona's news station, KTAR News, 92.3 FM. Wow, I just saw something I want to, I want to do some dumpster diving with. <laughs> Oh, man, I, I, this is a bad habit. This is like twice in one week I saw something in the trash and doubled back to get it. But, hey, welcome to my world. It's, um, tell us poor folk get by. The city continues to hold our own. We're holding that line, holding steady. Hundreds of thousands outside the city are still without lights and water. Jersey Governor Phil Murphy warning residents of potentially severe weather tonight. A very saturated, saturated ground. So yeah, a lot of uh, Oh no fucking way. Check that out. So I wanted to get these these shelves that had drawers in them. And that lady right there, she already grabbed the drawers. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's uh, it's tough all over. It's tough all over. Anyway, damn. <laughs> it's, I think that's the first time I've ever had that happen. Where I've seen something driving down the road, like next to a dumpster. I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. And then double back to see somebody walking away with the item I was going to grab. Hey, I'm just happy it got spared from a land uh, a landfill. Although I'm a little curious why she would grab the tubs and not grab the uh, the frame that they pulled out of his drawers. Anyway, man, that would have come in so helpful at my storage to, to put cables and adapters in and organize them with. But eh, whatever. <laughs> Can't believe that just happened. Wow. Um. Anyway. Anyway, I didn't. Uh, I didn't check traffic on. Uh, I didn't check traffic on. Coronavirus in Arizona. Coronavirus, top story. It's just played out. Um, anyway, um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't check. Google traffic before uh, this guy going the wrong side of the road. Yikes! Um, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't check Google traffic before heading out, but it's 4 p.m. So, to me, driving through Old Town Scottsdale or getting on the freeway is just way too hit and miss and likely to be frustrating. So I'm just surface treating it. And decided to back road it up 46 just because I got the green light at Thomas. I'm so I didn't get those drawers. 
and so completely amused that I saw somebody else walking away with him. Uh, and, 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 and I think the message to this is, if you've got something like that that's still usable by somebody, donate it to a charity. Donate it to a charity thrift shop. I mean, I, I don't know. It's probably cool if that woman got it for free, and I, I doubt I would have spent much on that at Goodwill. But the person who put that there had it destined to a landfill to become part of the pollution problem. And obviously, it was something that was still functional and usable for somebody to the point that two different people <laughs> were competing to try to grab it. So, reuse, reduce, recycle. Um, that's the way to save the planet. And, and something that's still usable, don't throw it in a dumpster. Somebody needs it. Somebody wants it. Ah, oh wow, construction project on the right is going along fast. Hospice of the Valley, Dementia Care and Education Camp. Interesting. Oh, here comes the traffic right report. Now he's live in the Valley Chevy Dealers Traffic Center. Thank you, Peter. Indeed it is. Uh, better than where we were anyway. It's not over with by a long shot, but we do have just one freeway crash. It's the same one, northbound 202 South Mountain Freeway, your transition ramp to the eastbound I-10, a wreck in that ramp. Also, just two surface street wrecks for the moment, 35th Avenue at Washington and Jackrabbit Trail at Van Buren. We've got a wreck there as well. But the one freeway that's kind of making up and taking away all the fun is the westbound I-10. That's where we're getting a lot of brake light action. Slow and go, an extra six to seven Seven minutes for a 19 to 20 minute ride westbound 10 from the 51 west out to the 101 going to get some bonus brake lights as well from the 303 out towards Verano way be ready to tack on a few extra there this traffic report brought to you by day and night AC. well that's nothing that messes me up so keep rolling uh so yeah it's 4 p.m i'm getting a really late start on today especially considering that i went to bed last night before uh before the sun even went down but uh yeah, today I had one of my uh, periodic health issues that really messes me up, and I, I don't think there's anything I can even really do about it, in spite of the fact that I do have government health care. Um, yeah, I, I woke up around the time Priscilla got up to go to work, and my head hurt really bad, and I took a couple uh, took a couple painkillers and went back to sleep in hopes that it would, it would clear it up. And she came in later in the morning to check on me, and, and I just woke up to one of the most excruciating migraine headaches I've had in quite some time. Um, it really, really felt like there were metal rods being stabbed through my brain, just pulsating pain all the way through it, like from my temples to the back of my head. And all I could do is basically lay lay in my bed in the uh, fetal position and, and, and just wince from the pain and cry and just wait for it to go away. Uh, I did take some more painkillers. She brought me a Mountain Dew out of the fridge and basically cried myself to sleep. Uh, woke up later in the afternoon feeling not good, but certainly feeling better. Uh, my head does still hurt a bit, but it's not debilitating to the point that I can't go about with my day. So, um, but a far left or far right candidate, I ain't voting for. And it looks like all five of these GOP candidates are far right. Well, you know, elections are very... <laughs> Very interesting because we know that the base in Join Arizona, me. because we are such a red state, that we lean very, very right in the primary. Then they've got to be able to pivot to win the general. And that's going to be very, very difficult. But as far as Biden, uh, Biden um, and our candidates, I think what they've done, at least that's what I've gleaned, maybe you have different information, but it's like they're kind of all kind of waiting to see uh, what the audience going to tell them. Now, I happen to believe that, the, the, that, that Biden is president, and I happen to believe that it's not going to change. And I think that we, we should move forward and um, 
you know, get moving on this election and get the right person elected. And being a Republican, I of course would like a Republican to to, to run and, and and to win this office. You know, uh, it, it used to be that way, right? Like you'd run, you know, you yeah. run to the base, right? Former, so you're out there going former governor Jan Brewer, by the way, the on KTAR. And then the pivot would come. It doesn't right. seem to be that anymore. Now you just stay over there in the hinterlands of insanity. <laughs> oh, you have a way of putting things so clearly. You are right. It is, uh, it is. the whole uh, situation has really, really changed. And what's kind of fascinating is that only here in Arizona are people still waiting on these elected results. As far as I know, Wisconsin has blown it off the chart. And so is Georgia. So we're the ones that are hanging out there. Well, you know, I, I, I'm glad people are hopeful, but it's not going to change anything. It's not well, going to change I'm anything. I'm glad Jan Brewer well, gets we, that. We, yeah, I, Chad, I think you nailed it. Former Arizona Governor Jan Brewer is joining us. I think you nailed it. Nobody pivots anymore. They just stay as far no. as they can. I mean, we have Kimberly Yee, who's running for governor, and she's fighting Ben and Jerry's ice cream over what they're doing in Israel. We've got another guy who, in Arizona, I don't even know the guy's name, is a restaurant owner. He created the MAGA burger. He wants to run for governor now. Is this the best that we have? Is this the best that the Republicans can come up with? Because i got to tell you that Katie Hobbs is like, this is awesome. Well, Katie Hobbs is probably the front runner on the Democratic side. However, I don't know that. What is it? Marco Lopez. Uh, he has quite a reputation and young and energetic. So I think that they'll have the, their ups and downs. I don't happen to know that other guy, Lieberman or whatever. But, you know, we sort of really set Katie up with this audit kind of stuff. Like we gave her all kinds of records. And, you know, Matt played. She was able to raise money from what I hear. And, uh, you know, she everybody knows her name now. Uh, in the past, I don't think people really knew who Katie Hobbs really was. We have got to elect somebody that's going to be able to run our state and move it forward and be reasonable. And uh, they've got to represent all the people. Just can't go in there and represent, you know, the five people that supported you. you got to represent all of the people. And they will find that out quickly. They will find it out quickly. Yeah, they will find it out quickly. We'll find out what happens again. Yeah. It'll start to go sideways and south, I'm sure, for both sides here sooner rather than later because money will start pouring in and then crazy will even, it'll just get more opportunity to be crazy. Talking to former governor of Arizona, Jim Brewer. All right, governor, our governor right now is handing out money to people whose uh, kids uh, essentially don't want to wear a mask or they don't want them to, to pick the schools they want to go to. This is totally how you would handle this, right? Huh. I didn't hear that. What is he doing? Where is he wow. getting money from? What is, I don't understand. What, what, what wow. Is He's going to pay parents 7000 bucks to put their kid in a private school with no masks. So basically, he's he's going to take money away from kids in schools that have kids protected with masks. I hope to God to this give is spin. Parents wow. money to put their kids in a school with no masks. So he's basically paying you to do the wrong thing and then he's penalizing folks for doing the right thing. Well, are these COVID dollars coming from the feds? Or they, it's not coming out of our state budget, right? Our education budget? I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, well, that would seem very strange to me. I can understand if he got the COVID dollars and there's no restraints on it and the Biden commission is going to let him do that, which doesn't make sense that they would approve that because they don't leave into school choice with whoever at all. But I would hope that, um, you know, we would take care of our our public schools, for goodness sake, uh, before we start handing out seven grand to, to all these other uh, private schools. And I believe in choice. I believe in school choice. I think it's good. But I always wanted to limit it to the fact that we still need our public schools because we've got certain schools, and you all are aware that the kids don't have transportation, they don't have these charter schools, they don't, you know, they don't fit into it, and it has well been said. expanded since I've been out of office tremendously, and it uh, is taking a lot of money out of our public school system. We have to guard that. I mean, our country is based on um, education, and so many of us, myself included, that's what I ran for office for, was, was public education. I mean, that was my background. Um, you know, I was 
very concerned about my kids' uh, education, as are most parents. It would be interesting to see what the accountability is, because I know with some of the dollars for charter school, uh, you know, for school choice, people were taking that money at one point in time, and they were putting it in their bank account, saving it for a later time, not using it. So they were bankrolling our dollars, our state dollars, but I hope that was remedied. I just think that we need a lot of accountability when we start throwing around those kind of dollars. And of course, I believe that I believe in parents' choice. I believe that people, I, I, I believe that government ought not to be telling us exactly what we need to do um, every day of our lives. The smaller the government, the better off we are. But we are in the pandemic, and I think maybe, maybe we should be spending maybe a couple of bucks, if you will, continuously hitting the airwaves talking about wearing masks. Former Arizona Governor Jane Bruce joining us. Yeah, I mean, you've got Ducey, you know, paying people to not wear a mask. And you've got, you oh. know, these, then you've got, what is it, Chad, Oregon? We've got the Democratic governor yeah. that says, yeah, now you have to wear a mask outside. outside. I don't care if you're not around anybody. You know, maybe you're in a parking lot all by yourself, but you better be in a mask. <laughs> and I'm looking at these politicians like DeSantis and the Democrat in Oregon, and I'm just like, you guys, I mean, we're in, the, we're in one of the we're, we're in one of the worst times of our life with this pandemic and everything that it's brought, death and the economy and you know, etc. And we have no one that can lead. And Biden, I mean, goodness gracious, this guy has no idea what he's doing about almost anything these days. I I, I second that. I agree with you oh, totally. There's the photo radar the card. The bottom line now is with our kids, Gato, is right. that what was it? I read one in four our children, little children, I mean, the kids, yeah. you know, whereas when it started out, they were like somewhat, you know, protected. Wow. This camera's not really cool. showing how awesome yeah, this view is, but driving north on Tatum and through this and part of Curtis Valley, looking very, off to the right, on, the, uh, the, the, the view is pretty the glorious. The it's the moon, baby, it's the moon. And you know what, I, I sound like my mother now. I think the end of the world is coming. <laughs> I do. I, it's just it's bizarre out there. Everything. It just doesn't make uh, sense. Where's everybody in the middle? Why can't we find people I don't in know. the middle to run for I don't office? Know. I, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure there are. There, there are people out there that are running. So, you know, it's early. They'll start having, you know, as these elections start moving on, you, they'll be finding themselves. They're going to ask you, and they're going to have to be very clear about it so people could understand. And I know the polling is, you know, coming back and it's saying certain things. I don't know if I totally agree with the polling, but, you know, I mean, I wouldn't vote that way if somebody called me up and asked me, but I don't answer those kinds of polls anyway. So. This is crazy. It's it's always fun having you on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends of all ages, the former governor of the great state of Arizona. The governor! Jan Brewer, as always, governor, thanks so much for coming on today. Oh, well, my privilege. Yes, Thank it is you your guys. privilege. You have no idea what a privilege it is to be on our show. <laughs> thanks, governor. Thanks, governor. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, she's always fun, and it is her privilege, and don't don't you ever forget that, governor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it is, it is... She's fun, and I, it, here's the beauty of politics. She is on the periphery of it. She's still a mover inside the party if she kind of wants to be. But the reality is, is she can speak her mind. And when you find out this is what politicians truly believe when they start to speak their mind, it, it, it's eye-opening, and, and I love it. Speaking of eye-opening, it is Wednesday, because we had the governor on. That must mean it's time to have a little wokeness in our Wednesday. Oh, for uh, God's what sake. shouldn't you call your baby daughter according to one lady wait till you hear this before that on to our baby daughter simply known as peter saber what news flash I don't know what to make of that uh, welcome there, I, but this is Peter <laughs> Seymour, all man, 100% American, red-blooded, all those sort Do of things. Do you identify as that, assist I, I, man? No, Nope, I'm a regular man. <laughs> Only one gender for me. Here we go. Today's COVID-19 metrics in Arizona, 2,222 new deaths and 26 new deaths, and uh, 2,200 cases, by the way, I should say. COVID-19 hospitalization numbers are about four times higher than they were before the, start, the state's third wave started back in June, but about half the number they were back in January in the highest. Yeah, that's where I kind of tune out. So, uh, yeah, I would imagine most people didn't want to hear that, but I, I did. I, I really enjoy the uh, Jan Brewer interviews when they happen on KTAR. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, try to remember to put in the um, in the description a, a, a time code so those that aren't interested in hearing that can just skip forward to now. Oh, so I am out of the town of Paradise Valley and into the 
the part of Phoenix that's referred to as Paradise Valley. It's very confusing to people that aren't from here. Because they're, uh, they're not the same thing. Um, I recall the last time I went this direction, I, I was talking about how the Paradise Valley Mall was uh, up here and was up here, was recently destroyed. Um, they're uh, knocking most of it down. So it's supposed to be building a, um, like a mixed use development there, which is kind of a city planning buzzword for uh, developments that mix residential and retail. And to be honest, I'm all for that. Um, but I do worry that it's going to, uh, any, any retail that goes in there is not going to help the, uh, the whole issue with lack of affordable rental property in Phoenix right now. So many people I know in, in the service industry, um, are really struggling to find apartments these days. And, uh, I'm going to take the outer, what was the outer mall parkway is kind of a shortcut here. Um, um, yeah, there's lots of luxury apartments going in and they rent for damn near as much as what, what a house rents for. Of course, there's a real shortage of houses available for rent. So I guess that's, you know, that's another dynamic that's new to the uh, housing market here in Phoenix. But, uh, yeah, it's, the, these luxury rentals that are going in, which I expect is probably what's going to go in where the Paradise Valley Mall was, doesn't really help people that work in, in service level jobs that need uh, need housing. Um, and um, um, and the, the, the problem is twofold. A, it creates a situation where, um, you know, people just can't find places they afford. But even if they can manage to, you know, maybe tighten up their budget and do some extra hustling on the side to afford it, it, it creates a situation where they won't meet the qualifications for an application to rent the place. Uh, I mean, take somebody like myself, now, I, I'm actually a pretty bad example because I'm, I'm not currently making enough money to afford the rent in my place, and, and my landlord is working with me, kind of. But, uh, but let's put it back to when I was, you know, let's let's say things were going a little better. Let's say I had more more karaoke gigs going on, and which which I'm working on, and, and eBay sales were a little more at the moment, which I'm working on. Um, Uh, to qualify for most apartment apartments in the valley now, especially ones that are that are run by you know corporate landlords, which is the majority of them, um, you need to show pay stubs that show that your income is you know like four times what the rent is, and and do the math. I mean, when the rent is twelve hundred dollars a month, that's uh. That means you need to show an income of $4,800 a month. And I don't really know many people that actually make that. So, especially not, you know, working class people. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, the housing market is definitely not a, not a good thing here in Phoenix right now. And I don't know, something's got to change. There's, there's, it, it feels like it's a bubble that's ready to burst. Um, so anyway, when I got in the car, my plan was to talk about the uh, talk about the um, Union Jack, which is what I'm on my way to. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my last video, I kind of touched on what happened when I was there yesterday, uh, and the phone cut off. I just cut off recording. I did get the pop up that told me I was out of uh, storage space, but I checked my storage space and I had plenty. And I, I just was like, you know what? Whatever, not even in the. I just, I just wasn't in the mood to, to record anymore, so I didn't. And, and I think my battery was a little low on my phone, which I think it is now as well. So I might get cut off any moment due to low battery. But uh, oh, and I learned another quirk about my iPhone, and when it does that, 
which I might mention later, but I'm going to try to stay focused here. So, uh, anyway, um, I did kind of mention there were some issues with the sound system, and I didn't get to hear what my karaoke is going to sound like going through my sound system, or going through the, the house system at the, um, at the uh, Union Jack. But I still ended up like making a really great impression on the uh, on the owner and the manager, and, and the staff as well. I believe um, I actually got a round of applause for singing half of a song, and I wasn't even really dialing it in. I just wanted to make sure that everything was kind of working, you know. But uh, um, the uh, sorry, I try to get a little extra attentive on this intersection. Cause we, and I'm not going to try to run that yellow light. Not worth it. Yeah, it's one of those intersections where sometimes people do sketchy things like fly through red lights. So, um, anyway, where was I? Uh, so, yeah, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to make of, uh, of uh, HB, the audio video guy, that's doing all the installing. Um, I really like the guy personally. He seems like a really great guy, and I enjoy talking to him. And, and I would love to actually spend more time, like, kind of geeking out with the guy because he seems like a huge wealth of knowledge, especially when it comes to audio video distribution systems and um, systems that, that run over run over networks and, you know, and, and um, IP control and things that are controlled through apps. Those are all things that I'm not very good at. And um, I feel like I can really learn a lot from the guy. But on the other hand, it looks like he's so much about that that he seems to, I don't know, it kind of feels like he's, he's maybe kind of go, getting a little bit extra, like maybe trying to sell people on stuff they don't really need. I mean, I've, I've always kind of been on the on the angle of, of you know keep it keep it simple, um, and and make systems as as you know with as, as few components and and as basic as as possible to accomplish what needs to be accomplished and do it well. And it almost seems like some of what's going in is 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 high tech just for the sake of being high tech. Or maybe some simple, you know, mechanical switches could have sufficed. Um, I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't explored the whole thing, and, and again, it is kind of over my head. So maybe, maybe I, I'm, you know, coming with the wrong perspective. But what little bit of talk we we had about audio definitely, definitely was enough to tell me that audio is not his strong point. Um, and again, I, I don't know much about his business. Um, you know, the guy seems really, really, you know, awesome. And he's he's overwhelmed, busy. He told me he had several other games going on. They're all equally as involved as this one is. And I, I certainly don't want to criticize his his knowledge of audio. Um, you know, make him feel feel bad to the point where he doesn't want to work with me. I mean, he certainly was talking about recommending me to some of the other bars where he's doing. I got a trailing left arrow here. Yes, I do. Screen guy, go. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, I definitely don't want to come off, you know, cocky and condescending. And, and and when this guy seems to actually kind of believe in me and and could could certainly refer me into some additional work. In fact, I, I've been thinking quite a lot about it, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I could kind of offer myself as a freelancer, offer my services to help him. Because I, I do think some of the things he's struggling with, like, I feel like I could learn a lot about network video stuff from him. Um, but on the same token, I, I feel like I might be an asset to his business from the audio end, as I, I'm definitely more knowledgeable of audio than he is. Um, in the one case in point, and this is just something that just really kind of threw me for a loop. I, so I went to Connect yesterday. And um, there was, um, like, with my understanding, there was going to be a, a, a mono XLR connector that would feed the, the house sound system, and a uh, and a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, oh, and an.